Då önskar vi välkommen till en timme som då vi har valt att kalla smarte valg och fullständig frihet. Mitt namn är er Trond Magnus Rönnemar, jag är er daglig leder i Norden Norge. Eh, vi har glädje att att presentera detta. Eh, vi har valt att ta en central roll där vi har bestämt oss för att vi ska vara ledande inom för segmentet smarta produkter. Eh, vi har en vision som heter perfekt samspel och det är er nettop det det handlar om det som vi nu ska ska presentera idag. Det er fyrklöver som ni ser bak här. Det är er det som ska komma kunden till gode. Då ska det vara perfekt samspel mellan de fyra sällskapen som står här och ö mot kunde och ö externt som vi har valt att jobba. Det vi ser er alarm.com. Det är er världens störste alarmsällskap som vi nu har knyttat till oss. Vi ser Racket. Det har en kompetens som vi har valt att knyta till oss, er en strategisk partner för för alarm.com för salg i Norge. Och så har vi då Idelock, Eida Nordan och så har vi Nordan själv som har produkten. Det er detta vi nu ska kombinera och det är er den nyheten vi nu ska fortälla dig om idag. Varför vi gör detta? Eh, vi har en förretningsidé som dock ser som är er att vi ska vara ledande i en utveckling, marknadsföring, levering av miljövänliga trygga fönster och dörrar med tillbehör. Och det är er nettop det fokus som vi nu snackar om nu att vi ska driva med utveckling och vi ska över göra det på tillbehörsidan. Vi har en digitaliseringsstrategi som har ett namn med Eco Digital Ready. Där vi har ni elementer, två av de går mot kunde och två av de går mot smarta produkter. Och det är er nettop för att leva upp till denna digitaliseringsstrategi att vi nu välger och lansera det vi nu lanserar. Vi är er ett solidt sällskap. vi går tillbaka till 1926 när det blev etablerat. Så med det som menar ju med att vi har både kompetens och vi känner markedet. Eh, vi har gjort många försök tidigare. Vi måste väl säga si att det har varit mer eller mindre vellyckade flera av de. Men vi har bynt tidigt i 2005 var det snack om hur vi skulle jobba med Borg. Vi har lanserat en smartdörr. Vi har jobbat mycket med Idelock som nu är er ett solid produkt som vi säljer och det nästa steget vill då vara smart till hem och då öbruka plattformen till eh, alarm.com. Det som vill var viktigt att vi nu flytte denna värdeskapning längre fram i produktionskedjan så nu levererar vi direkt från fabrik smarta produkter. Och det är er det samarbete vi nu ska presentera. Eh, från Racket så vill Peter Falk Pedersen överta scenen och säga si något om hur som de jobbar och vem med Racket. Efter det så vill Reed som då har huvudpresentationen idag fortälla om alarm.com, världens största alarmsällskap. Och så vill vi då uppsummera med frågor där Johannes Rasmussen som är er marknadsdirektör i Nordan gruppen vill komma upp här och uppsummera och öppna för frågor när när dessa två föredragen är er färdig. Så med det så säger jag välkommen till dig Peter. Tusen tack från många. Då har jag fått eh, 10 minuter till att få lov att presentera Racket. Jag heter alltså Petter Falk Pedersen och är er daglig ledare i Racket. Jag har jobbat en mansalder i säkerhetsbranschen helt tillbaka från tidig 90-tal. I löp av den perioden så har jag varit med på att sälja, projektera, installera 10 000 av alarmer och drifta dessa. På 90-talet var det hacka enklare att få installerat för det fanns inte så mycket teknologi i boligarna. Den har exploderat sedan. Så vi var relativt alene om att få lov att knyta upp en ny central runt säkerhetsskapet i boliger. Så är er det inte längre. Det blir en inflation i kommunicerande enheter som ska in i boliger. Hemmecentraler, rutere, smarthuscentraler och längre. Alltså att själva stövsugarna ska ju rota runt i huset vårt och kommunicera med en land central. Det sätter enorma krav till kommunikation och infrastruktur. Och det är er ett skrikande behov att ha min mening för standardisering och professionalisering runt detta. Och det är er mission till oss i Racket. De tekniska lösningarna i framtidens boliger må vara enhet för beboere i alla livsfaser. Vi har delt in i följande produktkategorier. Det är er smart med säkerhet som vi ska höra mycket om senare. 
Det skapar nätverk, det lyder bilder och det er tjänsten som följer. Det sista tror jag är er väldigt viktigt för att få ting till oss och virke. Vi önskar det vi har försökt få till och har gjort, det är er att sätta samman anerkända marknadsledande producenter som fungerar samman på en plattform. Som Nordan, Idelock, Alarm.com, Sonos och så vidare. Selve medierekke, Racket, er grunnsteinen i denne standardiseringstanken. Alle enheter skal ha en plass i et driftsikkert miljø. Skapet er produsert for at det skal enkelt gjøres installasjoner, standardiserte installasjoner, som minker driftsutfordringer. Vi har laget det slik at disse type installasjoner skal skje på en faglig og profesjonell måte. Produktene som er nettverksproduktene, som patcher og switcher, POE-switcher, for som skal gi strøm til disse enhetene, har vi produsert selv slik at de passer i vårt byggesett. Med å standardisere installasjonen på denne måten så får du bedre driftsstabilitet, og så gir det et fint design. Du tar vekk rotet. Og designet, det gjør sånn at dette skapet må ikke stå gjemt i et teknisk rum eller inne i et skap. Eller. Det kan til og med stå i vegg synlig. Og i små leiligheter som har plassutfordringer, så er dette verdiøkende. Vi har også utarbeidet prosjekteringsveiledere som hensyntar at boliger til en hver størrelse får nok av sekspunkter, slik at du får en optimal dekning i huset, både tråbundet og tråløst. Nu er det viktig å ha wifi i garasjen. Bil skal jo oppdateres. Det er viktig å ha wifi i fellesområdene i leilighetskomplekser, eller på terrassen. Det må du i hensyn ta når en bygger. Prosjekteringsveilederen som jeg nevnte, ivaretar også ønsker om lydsoner. Å få lydsoner integrert når en bygger er relativt enkelt, og for det etterinstallert er relativt kostbart. Lydsoner er en smarthusfunksjon som dermed er viktig å ta høyde for når en bygger. Nu er det ønsker om lydsoner på bad, på kjøkken, på terrassen, og jeg er ikke i tvil om at det er verdiøkende for bygget som selges i etterkant. Sett forsterkeren i skapet, knytt den til nettverk, og du kan koble dig til den ønskete lydsonen. Skapet har også gjort plass til andre typer enheter som trenger nettverk som Apple TV har dekoder, og da kan du også gjøre TV-zonen din kabelfri. Tjenester. En frustrasjon jeg har hatt fra å jobbe i 30 år i sikkerhetsbransjen, er at de markedsledende aktørene har en satt forretningsmodell. Det er en forretningsmodell som er leiebasert, altså du får en relativt lav inngangskostnad, men sitter igjen med en høy månedskostnad. Det ønsker vi også å gi et alternativ til. Vi vil gjøre våre kunder muligheten til å velge. Ønsker en at alarmen bare er lokal, så skal tjenestene tilpasses dette. Så kan en med marginale kostnadsøkninger knytte til de tjenestene en ønsker. Men vi har også lyst til å tilby de tradisjonelle tjenestene. Samme Samarbeidspartner av NOKAS kan vi også tilby alarmovåkning og vekterutrykning, som de andre også gjør. Men i tillegg til det, så ønsker vi også å tilby direkte tilkoppning til brannvesenet. Og branddirekt er en litt sånn fanesak for oss. Går brannalarmen, så er det brannmenn vi ønsker skal komme. Ikke vekter eller nabo. I tillegg så går inntektsstrømmen også da til brannvesenet, så kan øke den generelle beredskapen. Denne tjenesten er forløpig bare tilgjengelig i Rogaland, men vi har intensjoner om å utvide det veldig raskt over landet. Siste produktkategori for oss, Rosin i pølsen, er plattformen fra Alarm.com. Den er verdens største som Trond Magna nevnte, og den knytte alt i en og samme applikasjon. Det er hovedemnen i dag, så jeg skal ikke snakke mer om det. Det skal Rid få gjøre rett etter meg, og inngående gå ut på det. Men før jeg slipper Rid til, 
så skal jeg fortelle noen nyheter. Vi rekker etter da, sammen med Nordan og Idelok, tilpasses hos denne plattformen. Idelok er nå sertifisert og integrert med Alando.com-plattformen, og kan styres som med samme brukervennlig app. Nå kan du kjøpe Nordan dør rett fra fabrikk, inkludert Idelok. I tillegg så har vi produsert sensorer som er integrerbare i dør og vinduer. Disse erstatter de litt mindre estetiske sensorene utenpåliggende magnetkontaktene, og de er ferdig forberedt fra Nordan. Jeg håper dere da kommer bort og ser det på vår stand i hal B 0304 når det er ferdig. Og da vil jeg gjerne få introdusert Rid Gote til å få litt lite innblikk i Alarm.com-plattformen. Good morning, everybody. Um, so, I think I got a click here. <coughs> I am uh, with Alarm.com. Uh, just a, just a little bit of insight. So Alarm.com is essentially a cloud computing software company. Uh, so we we are sort of the back end provider of, we, we provide all the command and control layer for a lot of smart home and security companies around the globe. Um, we we uh, do everything in the cloud. We provide all the connectivity, whether it's via IP or via cellular. And um, then we build all the mobile apps and user interfaces so people can use security, IP cameras, or user smart home devices. <coughs> um, <coughs> we are, <coughs> um, we evolved kind of out of the um, security sector, which is why we're called Alarm, which is a little bit of a misnomer. It's not, not technically what we do anymore. <coughs> but <coughs> we are, <coughs> excuse me, we are a, um, uh, basically a, a B to B to C business. So we do not sell to end consumers anywhere in the globe. We always work under a private label brand. And we are the back-end software layer for a lot of the major security companies, uh, even utilities around the globe. And um, public company, uh, hey, thank you, you very much. Norwegian yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you plied me with liquor too much last night. <laughs> um, so we're public company. The, the, the thing to note about this is that uh, when, when you look at cloud computing and connectivity, a lot, of the, a lot of the things that you do in the security sector or home automation sector re rely a lot on connectivity and rely on remote access. So we, we create a, a constant on 24-7 connection to a business or home. So all the activity is, is um, captured, removed, uh, moved remotely, and it allows customers to access information uh, or collect historical data or do uh, uh, create schedules, alerts, triggers. Um, we have uh, over 7 million properties connected right now in the smart home area. Um, we're adding, we'll add about 2.5 million next year. Uh, so we are, we're on track to be at about, about a billion dollar company. So we're, we're far and away the global leader. Um, I think the other point is that we, we process a massive amount of data. So once a home is connected, we, we pull all that data in so that it can provide you uh, uh, insights and uh, information to the end customer. Um, we kind of work in these sectors, uh, security and automation, wellness, you're familiar with most of these things. Uh, example of UIs on the, on the side there. We're, we also have uh, businesses in particular verticals, so we have a, an energy sector business that's focused on demand response, energy management. Uh, we have a, a group focused really on multifamily property management, uh, and I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, we are partnered here in the Norwegian market with Racket and IDLock and, and Nordan. Um, we're, we're fully integrated with the, the hardware uh, solutions that they're providing to the market. And um, we're really excited about that because I think we're, they're beginning to uh, uh, kick things off and, and gain some momentum in the market. So that's kind of enough about us. I want to speak now more generally and broadly about smart home as a service. Um, I think you, if you've paid any attention to the media in recent years, you'll know that there's many, many different uh, elements of the home that are being, uh, being, uh, uh, becoming smart or, or, or gaining intelligence. Smart heating, cooling, smart, you know, lighting, 
uh, <clears throat> adding on all kinds of elements. Uh, even even now with the uh, with the prevalence of electric cars, people are uh, adding smarts to uh, to battery storage, and uh, and trying to create more integrated <laughs> solutions in the home. So uh, several of the um, <clears throat> You know, kind of giving you some insight on the, on the different pieces. Uh, I think a key, key element of, of smart home is what I would call awareness and 24-7 uh, awareness. If you look historically in the security sector, you had a door open, the system was armed, alarm went off, you got an alert, you had really no idea what was happening. That, that has kind of evolved now to, to the point where you can now, through sensing devices, get uh, an indication of what's happening at any time uh, based on your preferences, whether a door opens, a cabinet opens, if somebody, uh, if, if something happens, you can you can set up alerts to to be, be uh, notified without really triggering an alarm event or a medical event or a fire event. You you can create a lot of awareness. Also, access is very important now. Um, so you're seeing uh, the prevalence now of electronic locks uh, in the U.S. market now. Um, we're we're putting in about a hundred thousand. Uh, electronic locks every year, uh, and that number is growing very rapidly. So we have we have actually now millions of locks under under management. So the whole idea of what's going on, how do I get in my house, how do I know who came in my house, uh, that's that's kind of core to smart home, and that, it's sort of an evolution beyond what we would call the traditional security market uh, applications. Um, video is a, a pretty integral part. I think you, you've seen the prevalence of IP video cameras in, in the retail environment. Uh, they're, they're being massively adopted globally. Uh, we're actually in about 50 countries now, and video is, a, is a, a real key component. Everybody wants some visual awareness of what's happening on the, on the exterior of their home, their interior. I think the thing to note is there's a lot more technology being applied now to not only allow you to look into your home remotely, but then also have recording, whether it's locally or, or in the cloud, or to have video triggered based on identified activity or based on some other, um, <clears throat> some other event, like it could be a, uh, uh, some, somebody moving across a, a sort of a, a line in the driveway, which you create literally on the screen. The, the thing to, to note that you'll see uh, emerging, I think, in the next several years is a lot more analytics. So now with cameras, you can say, I only want to know if a person is here. I only want to know if a person is moving right to left or if a car enters my driveway. And, you, and you'll filter out all the non-essential information that, that you really don't want to be made aware of. So, so video is evolving and will become very pervasive. Um, I think you're all familiar with energy, smart thermostats, smart uh, boiler, heating, cooling, solar inverters. All of those systems are being, being integrated, so you can create schedules, drive more efficiency, and, and pro uh, create comparative data in terms of your usage, or, or even in some cases enable this to, to meet uh, energy conservation requirements in a, in a given country. Um, the other the other thing that uh, is massively popular now in the, in the uh, North American market and becoming much more popular here in Europe are, are doorbells. So I think you're aware of Ring. Ring has been um, uh, advertising uh, just pervasively across uh, a lot of countries. I think you'll see more, more doorbell solutions emerge. Uh, the, uh, they're very popular from a consumer standpoint that you can look in, create an interactive visual and audible connection to whoever's at your door. You can even then trigger up, trigger remote access through, through a, a, a lock, ID lock. <clears throat> um, you then can tie all this together from a, uh, you know, the, so w whether it's lights, locks, thermostats, shade control, water control, valve control, you can then create interactions, schedules, triggers, alerts, and, uh, and create everything, create an interaction. So if I, I detect a water leak in, in a particular bathroom, I can turn off a valve, shut down the water, I, and then I can get an alert. I can even, we can even tie in a, a, a plumbing network, uh, and, and we do that in some countries. So the, you've heard like if, then, that, there's a, there's a lot of different uh, uh, automation type solutions on the market that you can, you can even purchase uh, retail. Lighting, um, this is another a big growth area now. 
Uh, historically, you could turn lights on and off, you could dim lights, you could create lighting schedules, you could trigger lights based on uh, uh, identified motion where the lights out outside went on in your house. Uh, but now there's much more movement into LED lighting control, um, creating moods, uh, changing the lighting, lighting tones and, and colors based on time of day, and, um, cr and creating sort of what we call scenes where you can, you can say, okay, I want a particular lighting uh, at, at certain times of the day, or I could even have a lighting, like if my, uh, <coughs> I know my, my, my kid left a room, I could have the lights change, <coughs> for example. <clears throat> and then I think the uh, kind of as a as a extension of a lot of more hardcore security requirements. There's the whole whole qu thing about critical systems. Is there CO? What's the air quality? Um, do I is there smoke detection? Do I have do I have a water leak? Do I have a pump failure? All of that is is really part of the smart home domain, and and all those systems can now be controlled through through various smart home platforms. Uh, we're, we're very big in uh, now water management uh, and leak detection, both uh, high, low flow leak. This is, this is uh, being adopted in a lot of markets by builders, developers, and we're seeing rebates from insurers based on uh, the, <coughs> the uh, installation of water management solutions so we can get leak detection. Um, in a lot of markets, leak uh, water damage is, is more costly to insurers than fire damage, for example. Um, and then certainly enter, uh, the whole media management systems, I think, as you saw with Racket, the idea to, uh, that you can uh, create a structured wire environment, uh, integrate your streaming services, some of the newer, newer type of media to, to uh, have music playback like Sonus, all of that is very pervasive and, and now even being tied more broadly into home automation solutions. Um, Wellness, aging in place, again, uh, a big, a big uh, deal in most countries, especially as the population ages. That's also part of the smart home environment. Historically, you knew you had a panic button, somebody fell down, can't get up, but it, they're, they're now becoming much more holistic in the sense that you can, can look at the entire environment. You can see, did somebody get out of bed? Did they, did they take their meds? Did they use the bathroom? Um, all of that can be uh, you can you can create a much uh, more a richer monitoring environment without being uh, really in, uh, intruding on somebody's space. So you can essentially look at have what we call learning. You, the systems like to learn behaviors. Say, hey, normally my mom is going to bed at 10, getting up at 8. If she doesn't get out of bed, I can get an alert, and then I can call her. And I'm not I'm not like bugging her, but I'm I'm saying, hey, is everything all right? Because I saw that she had some. Uh, some un, uh, unusual activity uh, within her own. So aging's a big deal. And then I think the final thing I'll touch on here is voice. Um, I don't know how prevalent it is here, but, but certainly if you look at Google, Apple, uh, <clears throat> Amazon, uh, even other providers, th there, there is a, a huge push. And if you look strategically at Amazon and, and Google, they, they would uh, tell you that voice will become the dominant medium to interact with with, with your phone, with your, your home in the future, and they're, very, they're pushing those technologies. Voice recognition uh, continues to evolve and become more sophisticated, and you will see not only standalone <coughs> uh, voice modules like, the, uh, like you see here, but you will see those technologies embedded into more and more consumer devices, whether it's uh, your TV, whether it's your, your, your coffee pot, but they're, they're pushing voice uh, wherever they can, and that's a, a strategic, I think, I think uh, Amazon has about 10,000 people uh, devoted strictly to voice technologies. So again, voice can be integrated into home, home, uh, home solutions and uh, is, is quite popular. The, <clears throat> I think the other uh, point I want to make here is if you look at, at smart home, I mean, a lot of people tend to think of it in terms of, of a device. I, I plug in a light plug, I, li I have a th smart thermostat. And there's a, there's a, th this is just a representation of some of the products that we, we integrate with. So you have, you have a huge array of devices, but, but oftentimes they don't add a lot of compelling value unless they're all connected and you're able to access information from them or control them remotely. So the part of what we try to do and, a lot, and other providers and competitors in the space try to do is create a connectivity and interaction between devices, so they're more relevant and they're more uh, they're more helpful 
to, to the consumer. Um, and this uh, kind of another way to look at that, if you look at the, <coughs> uh, if you go, go to the retail environment now, you can buy a, a smart switch, you can buy a camera, you can buy a smart thermostat, you can buy you know, a voice control device, and they're, they're all more single point solutions. That's, that's attractive if you have a particular need and you, know, you just want to have a doorbell, great, go buy a, get a doorbell retail. If you, want to, if you want to then make them all work together interactively, you need to have a unified platform to manage that. That's kind of what we do and that's why I think we're very popular and we're seeing a lot of momentum globally because we can, we can make the stuff all work together and create a much richer user experience. Um, the other, uh, and this, this is certainly applicable to us, but I think as you look at uh, even uh, a what Amazon and Google are doing and other competitors in the space, they're, they're making everything platform-centric. And, and kind of one of the, the key values there is that not only can we connect the property or devices in the property to, to users, we can bring in a lot of other pieces. We can create cloud-to-cloud -cloud integrations, we can bring in uh, data, so, for example, in the U.S., we do uh, severe weather alerts. We can give you insights into your power outage. Is it something that's in your house or in the neighborhood? We're working in Chile to provide um, earthquake alerts through the, through the national networks. So once we're connected and once we have hundreds and millions of homes connected, we have a lot of ability to, to bring in other data and provide, again, a, a, richer, uh, a richer amount of information that people can can uh, take advantage of. And then certainly uh, the, the hardware piece. So we integrate with uh, a lot of different hardware, both in the automation side, security side, energy side, uh, and we can kind of pull all this together. So that's, that's a little bit about smart home and what's available. There's a lot of stuff on the horizon. Um, I think certainly the thing you'll see that will be most exciting is uh, low power WAN, the, the, the SIGFOX, NBIOT, LoRa uh, technologies. All of them are being rolled out by the major telcos. But in the future, right now you need a hub in the home. Uh, in the future you'll be able to slap sensors up anywhere, indoor, outdoor, and have them all connect remotely directly through the uh, cellular infrastructure. And you won't, it, you can become less, if you have a in a, a building away from the home, you have a, a vehicle or a tractor you want to you want to monitor. You can de deploy these devices and tie them into your your home ecosystem as well. <coughs> um, okay, landscape. The, the, I think the the one thing to note um, w when when you look at the the sectors, you know we're we have uh, about eighty percent of our businesses in the residential and multifamily sector, but the commercial sector is also, especially in the small medium business, they, uh, they find like energy management, smart thermostats, uh, monitoring of doors, monitoring of activity, monitoring of traffic, looking at traffic patterns through the time of day, that's all really smart home type technology. So, so the, in the commercial small medium business sector, this is also very popular. Property management, multifamily, rental uh, condominiums where you have a, a common space and you have individual units, a lot of them are adopting like a whole ecosystem which can be managed both individually and also collectively by the property manager or by, for example, the guard. So we have, we have properties in <clears throat> Colombia, South Africa, where they're very, they're very secure environments, but they have, we can help manage the access, provide provide the perimeter security, but then you also can know at your unit if, if a door is opening or closing or, or have uh, a visual monitoring <coughs> of, of, your, of your particular property. The, again, the, the trends, if, I mean, if you look back, if you're uh, <coughs> five, ten years ago, I mean, everything, door, smart doorbells, smart locks, I mean, smart lighting, they, they just were not, they didn't exist. Um, even, even, um, you know, when we started, there weren't, there weren't smartphones and there weren't mobile apps. I mean, we were working originally off of pager networks. But, but the technologies, I mean, when, when you think about it, they, ch they change very rapidly and dr drastically. And the, the rate of adoption varies uh, quite a bit by market. Um, I think if you look at, and this is just sort of a depiction of different markets here, U.S., uh, Canada, there are certainly market leaders in terms of adopting a lot of different technologies. 
Uh, Europe has been catching up rapidly. Um, I think the Nordics are, are pretty tech savvy uh, consumers and they are adopting these at a pretty rapid rate. But, but we do expect that smart home penetration, whatever, whatever it might consist of, whether it's you know, visual, you know, uh, smart doorbells, video cameras, will all um, uh, continue, the, the, the pace of adoption will accelerate and it will become uh, very commonplace. And the drivers will differ. If you look at, like in Ireland, you can get significant rebates for, for uh, energy conservation technologies. You, that's true in a lot of markets. So you'll see that I think the government sector become a, a bigger factor. And we're also involved in a number of smart city projects around the globe, but, but everybody's in the, in the uh, public sector is going to start uh, exerting influence or investing in the adoption. <coughs> um, Consumers, again, this, this is uh, a North American uh, uh, survey, but uh, generally there, there's a lot of interest a lot of different, a lot, across a lot of categories. Um, these were some, <clears throat> I can't even read all these, some insights derived from the U.S. market. I don't have a lot of Norwegian s stats, but they're the, 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 I guess the main point here is that People like smart home. They're willing to pay for it. They want it in their, in their properties. They like to see it when they buy the property. It enhances the value of the property. And they don't want to screw around installing it. They want somebody to do it for them. <clears throat> and that's all borne out by a lot of the statistics. There is, um, and I don't know how pervasive smart home technology is in your retail environment here, but if you go into the U.S. market, uh, even German market, all through the Latin America market, the, the, the building trade shops, the Best Buys, electronic shops, they all have a, a wealth of smart home solutions. So it's, it's becoming uh, very commonplace. But the, I think the thing to note is that while people are happy to buy a camera and have a, have a camera they can look in at their dog, when you get into a, a more integrated solution uh, and add, add a broader array of technologies, people don't want to screw with it. They want it professionally installed. So <clears throat> the, um, I think then it, the, 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 the tying this together, I think the question is what's the relevance to, to builders, developers, people kind of in the trades? Um, and I, I think I certainly may have made this point that the um, people, people want smart home technology and it's, uh, it's something they're willing to pay for and it's something that, will <clears throat> that they see as a <clears throat> an enhancement of their, of their our property's value. <clears throat> in the U.S. market, we, um, we are working al already with a lot of the major builders. So <clears throat> Lennar, Toll, um, <clears throat> they're all, a lot of them have, <clears throat> have programs and they have integrated offerings. It's like pick out your carpets, pick out your appliance, pick out your smart home solutions. So they've built programs around, around smart home and we, we have <clears throat> worked with many of them uh, uh, through, through partners like Racket to put together offerings that can be, can be turnkeyed rolled into the mortgage price uh, the, or the purchase price and then uh, and, 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 and installed for them. So there's, there, there's a lot of programmatic type elements that you can uh, adopt if, if you're interested in the, in the space. Um, <clears throat> the, the, so I think if you look at it at, as a, at a builder developer, as I, as I said, you, you <clears throat> customers will appreciate that you're trying to make, give them greener, smarter technology. It's a competitive differentiator. Um, it can enhance the value of property. But I also want to point out that you can adopt this uh, as well for operational efficiency purposes and even to manage your activities in the market. So if you have model homes, you can, you can partner to, have, 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 uh, to show the features, provide security, provide vacant property security. All of these things can be adopted just to, to, to make your um, activities <clears throat> more, more cost effective. Um, and even, I think, in, in a lot of cases in markets with a lot of vacant properties, we can manage access remotely. Um, if, like, for example, Australia, we monitor thousands of cell phone towers in remote sites. So they, people come out, we, they can <clears throat> access the, the property remotely, we can take a picture of them, verify their code, provide data on who came in, who accessed it. Sa same analogy for, for vacant properties. So there's a lot of things you can do just, just to use them in your business, not, not only um, for consumers. <clears throat> um, so the, 
when you look at adopting smart home, you, 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 if you look at the, the, all the dimensions, okay, hardware, services, installation, <clears throat> marketing, you, could, you can um, look at trying to be a player in this space and, and put those pieces together yourself, or you can do what most people do in the, in the, in the builder and development trades is you find a partner, which you have, you have a very uh, capable uh, set of partners in the room here, so <clears throat> working through a third party uh, third party partner, they can they, you can layer this stuff on pretty painlessly. You can you can then of course derive some some revenue from that, but you don't have to worry about all the all the hassle and logistics. And, and as we all know, building is a, a <laughs> complicated trade, um, and there's a lot of a lot of pieces. Whether it's developing, building, uh, managing properties, a lot of different pieces. A lot of times you want to just take that off your plate, do it to a third party. You can, <clears throat> you can form affinity partnerships, um, and, and what I mean by that is that your, you can co-market your, these services through whether it's through a retailer, whether it's through a uh, utility. A lot of them will help drive customers or drive adoption as well. So you can create, we have, we have many situations where an insurer <clears throat> works through a partner uh, to, put, to put smart home in, in new, home, new construction. So it's, Again, it's a little bit more, a more of a complicated uh, set of relationships, but, but there are a lot of incentives on the utility side, insurance side, and even telco side to form partnerships to drive adoption, and they, they, they have a vested interest. If it's leak detection, they're interested, for example. Um, <clears throat> uh, you, could, you could offer an allowance and say, hey, we'll give you an allowance to, uh, to put in smart doorbells. That would be a, a simple solution, or just tell customers to go buy the stuff themselves. <clears throat> but I think <clears throat> the, the, um, the my point is there's a whole array of, of options available, from very simple to very uh, sophisticated. <clears throat> and <clears throat> while we looked at the the racket, racket has a very very robust ecosystem you can adopt, but you can even adopt that piecemeal, meaning, hey, just throw doorbells in my properties, throw in. <clears throat> um, you know, smart thermostats. You can you have a, a ra an array of services you can adopt um, uh, based on on your on your particular set of circumstances: single family, multifamily, commercial. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, we and Racket support model home programs, so we'll help uh, subsidize the cost for the hardware and for uh, providing the services to you to, as a as a representation to your customers. And you can you can build packages, and uh, <clears throat> I think uh, you you saw I think earlier sort of the idea that you can have a couple of different offerings from very simple to very uh, very rich, and give customers sort of a, a two or three choice option, and then have model homes reflect those options. <clears throat> the other thing um, I I want to touch on here, <clears throat> um, to, just to pr prompt your thinking. Once you have properties networked, you can then look at everything in, in a sort of a uh, consolidated way. So we, um, uh, whether it's properties or whether it's, uh, for example, McDonald's, uh, you, can, you can aggregate the view of, of hundreds of properties. So if you have, you're trying to manage things, you can take, uh, take a look at these things um, in a, uh, what we call kind of an enterprise level view. Um, so the, I've got the, I'm going to kind of skip here ahead. So the idea is that, that you have an architecture that if you have, <clears throat> once you have everything on a platform, you can say, okay, okay I'm going to look at all of the locations a, and set up all the alerts and all the video feeds for one or 10 or hundreds or thousands of properties and manage them efficiently through, through one place, manage access, you can manage, uh, you can, you can uh, provide user codes to whether it's maintenance people, whether it's the renters. You can, you can centralize all that and manage it very efficiently, and we've been very successful driving these kinds of programs. Um, and even, even at the consumer level, <clears throat> you can say, okay, I have a smart home, but guess what? I put a camera at work. I put, I put a, a camera at my parents' house. Put it all in, on one app. It's not, it's not like you have to create a one-to-one -one relationship. You can, you can distribute smart home technologies and, and consolidate them all on, on, uh, with one viewpoint. So these are, these are just uh, a few things we <clears throat> are doing that, that may be of interest if you're doing multifamily type development. It could be uh, things, whether it's for, um, 
for rented or, or owner occupied, uh, where you can then provide both common views to uh, common uh, like, like entry points videos for everybody and then individual unit control or then even uh, vacant property management which is a big deal because there's a, a lot of vacant property all over the world that people are trying to manage uh, and control heating, look for leakage, look for uh, manage security needs. So just to pique your interest that there's, <clears throat> I've, I've given you a little bit of a, a narrow view of what, what the possibilities are, but I think uh, there's a rich uh, array of scenarios and solutions that you can look at and adopt uh, based on your particular circumstances. So I think that <clears throat> the, um, uh, the point here was just to kind of give you a quick snapshot of what's been happening in the market. Um, we, you know, you, I, would, I would certainly uh, encourage you to consider what role you want to play and whether you, whether you want to play at all. But, um, but there's a lot of things that are available now and that are coming. And um, I think you will see <coughs> uh, a lot of your, your customers uh, wanting these solutions and, and wanting to adopt them in the future. And then I would encourage you, if you had some more interest in uh, understanding what we can do, uh, talk to your representatives from Norton and wreck it. So I think with that, we were going to have a little Q&A and see if anybody has some questions we can answer. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Reid, uh, for uh, giving us an insight of Alarm.com. Uh, Trond Magnar and Petra, can you also come up to the scene so that you will uh, be available for, for questions? Um, I will do some of it in Norwegian and some of it in English, if it is okay for you. Of course. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to elaborate a little bit on uh, why Nordam uh, and security. Uh, and then I will do it in Norwegian. Uh, so, so uh, Nordan har i alle år vært opptatt av dette med sikkerhet. Uh, og det har jo sin naturlige sammenheng med at uh, vi leverer vinduer og dører til bygg. Alle mulige typer bygg. Og da har vi i mange, mange år hatt en forretningsidé der det står i klartekst, og Trond Magnar hadde den oppe, der står at vi skal utvikle miljøvennlige og sikre, safe and secure, begge deler, windows and doors, with accessories, altså med tilbehør. Og da er det jo sånn at vi har, som du viste, Trond Magnar, gjort noen forsøk hvert tidlig ut i markedet for å se hva det finnes av muligheter for å koble ulike device opp til kjerneproduktene våre. Det som er litt av utfordringen i byggenæringen er jo at den er jo ekstremt fragmentert allerede. Det er jo mange yrkesgrupper, og det er veldig mange ting som skal fungere sammen for å få en effektiv byggeprosess. Og så kommer vi frem til at ok, men vi skal gjøre dette ytterligere komplisert gjennom å få smarte ting til å snakke sammen. And uh, that, 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 that is uh, the big challenge now we are facing, a fragmented industry with a lot of very proud uh, things uh, in, in, in to build a house or a building. And now we are going to adapt the fragmentation with even more uh, technology. And uh, the question I have uh, first of all is uh, really before we open up the scene is just to think about uh, questions, but what uh, do you think is the different this time uh, uh, from the previous? Uh, maybe, it, uh, do anyone dare to answer? What is the big difference now? Mr. Reid, do you have uh, some... Uh, well, well I, think, I think everything, I mean, <clears throat> so having been around the block and <clears throat> in this business for a long time, the technologies have gotten much better and more capable and more and more cost effective historically anything you do in the security or smart home realm required a large investment mm -hmm. and didn't provide a lot of compelling value in terms of the connectivity options i think i think now they the, the solutions are not only easier to adopt they're uh they're, they're more cost effective and they provide a lot more value uh and and so there, there is more of a consumer draw to pull through demand yeah. uh in, yeah. in yeah. now so Petter, do you have uh, any comments to this? In Norwegian or English? Uh, you choose. <laughs> it's up to it. you. 
I can try in English. I, I think the, the most important thing is, is that all are connected to one platform, connected with services. Yeah. If you buy single uh, smart devices, you have to do it yourself. But yeah. have it in one platform that is certified, integrated, you had the maintenance and the services connected to it. That, I think, is a, a game changer. Yeah. And, and Tom Magna, from your perspective? And from from Nordland's point of view, it's of course that we now are working with the big players. We are not doing it ourselves. That we have tried before, not with uh, great success. Mm. So now when we play with the, with the big partners, I think we, we have a really in a good position to succeed. Mm. Yeah. yeah. We like to think a global player. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, yeah, my role is just to open up for uh, questions. Uh, do anyone have questions uh, to uh, the gentlemen over there? I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, we are. They are probably thinking: I'm, Are we going to do it in in English or Norwegian? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, but then, if not, then uh, we will we'll just try to step back a little bit. I, I couldn't see anyone. Uh, with their arms up? No? We have a microphone there, so it's no problem, but no, to, just to, to clarify uh, a little bit more, um, the, the, the everyone knows about IoT, no. Internet of Things. So you can buy thousands of devices, normally they are connected to, to uh, a gateway, and then you have 100 systems. Now the thing is to bundle this together with a powerful engine. Uh, but if you now look, uh, how many millions of, of subscribers do we have in Alarm.com now? Uh, well, over 7 million properties. So, uh, and, and, and so we have more than 7 million properties. That's a little bit more than what we have of inhabitants in Norway. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess then we have a lot of experience in terms of how to manage these 7 million properties. Yeah, I, and I think the, the that's and that's probably part of the reason we're successful is that we're, we're we allow our partners to scale. So if yeah. you look at uh, our larger partners uh, like ADT globally, yeah. uh, G4S globally, they have they have hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of customers. Yeah, they all have to manage. So you not only have the the question of how does a consumer use the services, but how do you as a provider mm. provide support? So yeah. the, the I think the critical thing is that if you put all this stuff in your house. You don't want to mess around trying to keep it working or have, be frustrated, but that's the role of the provider. So like the, the racket guys can get the stuff installed, but more critically, in partnership with us, manage the platforms, uh, do all the diagnostics, troubleshooting, make, make remote changes, all of that's sort of baked into a, a platform service. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, in, in Nordan, we are very concerned about how to get optimal security. And we have this idea that uh, by becoming a smart house or a property, you always have to start with the main entry doors, no, with a smart lock. And now we saw on the chart that that is really taking, taking on. Five years ago, you didn't really have any products. Yeah. Now there are uh, very good products, and we have ID lock that we are very proud of. Uh, because once you have the door, then you have the, the entrance, so to speak, in the smart universe. Adding windows will then be uh, very good in terms of sheltering the whole house. Uh, you can walk inside and you can uh, avoid uh, disturbance from outside and you can monitor what's happening. Uh, but uh, will that, are that, that is the biggest trend now to, let's say, look at the... Sec I saw security was the number one. 64% had security as their uh, main wish. Well, well certainly, I mean, the, the, if if you look at what consumers are motivated by, number one, it's going to be security. Peace of mind, whether it's from intrusion, burglary, from mm. fire, from uh, you know, a medical alert. But, they, but, but, but monitoring the perimeter, the doors yeah. and windows, is, is a real critical piece of that. And even, even uh, elderly care, if you have an uh, elderly parent w with uh, dementia, yeah. if, they w if they open a door or a window, you want to know it, know what's happening. So yeah. The, yeah. that's, a, that's a, a key I think part of all smart home applications. Yeah. Mm. Good. Uh, anyone now uh, with some uh, questions? Uh, we have brought them all the way over to U from Utah. To 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 to, to, to Tuga, do you have a question? Very good. Yeah, they will come back. Uh, microphone. 
Yeah, very interesting to, to listen. Uh, and uh, I was thinking a little bit of all the, let's say, opportunities now to actually monitor people, movements, are they sleeping, are they in the bathroom, and so on. What about, uh, I'm not sure of, of the English word, but so person uh, van. What is that in English? P uh, how much it, it, can, yeah. you, can you actually do w w within the law in terms of p looking at what people do? Yeah, so a very good question. So there, there's a lot of parts. I mean, we, we, we comply with all uh, GDPR and uh, European privacy shield requirements. There's even requirements. Um, every country has a whole set of requirements. So we have a large legal team. That were an IT team that works on on privacy. So everything we connect is is encrypted. Uh, uh, we, we we have uh, dedicated uh, VPNs for all the communication. So everything is is encrypted and private. Um, you, but but certainly, if you look legally, uh, you can't uh, publicly monitor, uh, for example, a street. In certain, if you have a camera at your home pointing at a street and you catch somebody uh, committing a crime, that may be not legal in some countries. But we, we try to make sure we comply and we convey the, 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 the parameters or limitations on a, on a country by country basis. I think the big thing is that anything that happens in terms of video or data or activity is only accessible to the end customer uh, on the property. So we're, we've, uh, we, we're very religious and strict about how we how we manage data and who has access to it. So none of our data is sold, it's never used for marketing purposes. It's all completely owned by the by the end subscriber and can be wiped clean under GDPR regulations if, if they make a request. Okay, everyone, I, I think that uh, you all have a good opportunity to come to our uh, the Nordan stand where you will get a full uh, demonstration of, of the concept. And uh, we will be there, so uh, don't hesitate. Uh, com com ned på standen og se uh, produkten uh, live. Uh, 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 in Norden we have this uh, vision of, uh, of, of a perfect samspill. And my thinking is, and the Norden thinking is, that finally we can achieve this by uh, having a, a powerful machine being able to bundle smart devices with the core products. So uh, come down and uh, take a look uh, at our stand. Thanks for your time.